political bullshit. One of my favorite quotes of all time is from James Maynard Keynes. He said, when the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do, sir? He said that because a political opponent was ripping on him for changing his views on some positions. And that comeback, when the facts change, I change my minds. What do you do? That's a brilliant reminder that, yeah, we're all human. We don't know everything from the get-go. Part of life is living and learning and adjusting as we go. He reminded everybody that the ability to change your views was a good thing, not a bad thing. Now, this pandemic documentary has exposed these large groups of people that now think they can just modify reality to fit their narrative instead of the other way around. These people need to take advice from John Keynes. You don't make up your mind and then cherry pick the facts that support your conclusion. As the facts come, as the facts change, it's okay to adjust your conclusion. But this pandemic video, and I hesitate to call it a documentary, so video is like a cornucopia of affirmation for these people. Now, that's not to say that you should just disregard it immediately before you even watch it. I think you should give it a chance. I think you should give everything a chance. But after you watch it, it's pretty clear that it should be largely disregarded. And what's most ironic about this documentary is that the people who are taking it at face value are like the same people who readily dismissed all the advice and information that was put out by actual scientists and medical professionals. They called stats that they put out a hoax. They called the case and the death projections media manipulation. They called the lockdowns and the regulations fear-driven. But then they see this YouTube video and suddenly for 26 minutes, everything that enters their ears is now unequivocally true. I saw all these pandemic deniers suddenly sharing this on social media left and right saying like, this video is so important. Everybody needs to watch this. Watch it before they take it down. So I did. So I watched it. And I was shocked that people would react to a video like this in that way. Especially like people who practice such extreme levels of skepticism toward actual medical professionals and scientists. I mean, pandemic is overwhelmingly unconvincing. And I, I know I had bias coming into it, so I tried to keep an open mind, not set unrealistic expectations. So the bar was already set somewhat low, but it was honestly so much worse than I thought it would be. Even as, just, just as far as the presentation of the information goes, not even taking into account the actual information itself and whether it was false or factual, just the fact that it was literally just an interview with a woman and that's it. <laughs> There was no evidence backing up her claims. It was literally just a woman talking. It was just her word. That was it. To look at scientific data and say, I don't believe that. That's bullshit. But then you hear a woman who just, she just never blinks that she spews out conspiracy theory. And you're like, now that, that's true. She's speaking truth. That's absurd. And again, I'm not even talking about the words coming out of her mouth yet. I'll get into that. Just the entire plot is absurd. So getting into the actual information of this video. I'm a little late to the game. There's already plenty of debunking videos out there done by like doctors and they already went into every point. So I'm not going to do that and turn this into like a 45 minute video. Plenty of other people have already done that. So I'm just going to dig into like the first few minutes and a little bit here and there just to at least show you how incredibly misleading this is because it's incredible. So first off, the mission statement of this documentary, expose the scientific and political elite who run the scam that is our global health system while laying out a new plan that allows all of humanity to reconnect with healing forces of nature. Sounds good so far. Then you get to the actual video, which I don't have the actual video. It's taken down like everywhere, but I do have the audio. So I'll play the audio and then throw up some pics and text to accompany it. Dr. Judy Mikovits has been called one of the most accomplished scientists of her generation. Her 1991 doctoral thesis revolutionized the treatment of HIV AIDS. At the height of her career, Dr. Mikovits published a blockbuster article in the journal Science. The controversial article sent shockwaves through the scientific community as it revealed that the common use of animal and human fetal tissues were unleashing devastating plagues of chronic diseases. For exposing their deadly secrets, the minions of Big Pharma waged war on Dr. Mikovits, destroying her good name, career, and personal life. Now, as the fate of nations hang in the balance, Dr. Mikovits is naming names of those behind the plague of corruption that places all human life in danger. All right, first off about that blockbuster article that they talked about. So that was posted in the journal Science in 2009. And then 10 independent studies tried to recreate her tests 
and all 10 of them failed. So after the 10 failed tests, they concluded that her tests must have resulted from contaminated samples, which is why they weren't able to recreate it. So then in 2011, the editors at Science retracted the article, saying they had lost confidence in the report and the validity of its conclusion. So that's that. Then right out of the gate, she starts talking about her arrest. She was arrested allegedly for her discoveries, according to her, but it was under the ruse that she had stolen information. She was then put in jail with no charges and no bail. They planted evidence in her home and they searched it without a warrant. Then she was placed on a gag order for five years, told if she violated the gag order, they would find more evidence and throw her back in jail. Truly terrifying stuff. So you made a discovery that conflicted with the agreed upon narrative. <laughs> Correct. And for that, they did everything in their powers to destroy your life. Correct. You were arrested. Correct. And then you were put under a gag order. Um, for, for five years, if I went on social media, if I said anything at all, they would find new evidence and, um, and put me back in jail. And so what did they charge you with? Nothing. But you were in jail. I was held in jail with no charges. I was called a fugitive from justice. No warrant literally drug me out of the house. Our neighbors are looking at what's going on here. You know, they searched my house without a warrant. They literally terrorized my husband for five days. They said, if you don't find the notebooks, if you don't find the material, which was not in my possession, but planted in my house. As if you took intellectual property from the laboratory. Is yes. that correct? It was, it was intended to appear as if I took confidential material names and intellectual property from the laboratory. And I could prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that I didn't. So a lot of information is either just left out or she twists it into this conspiracy narrative. So here's the story, including all the information, including what she conveniently left out. So what she doesn't tell you is that she was fired from her job at WPI in September, 2011 for refusing to cooperate with one of her collaborators. After she was fired, she told her one of her former employees, Max Faust, to uh, get some notebooks and samples from the facility that she was just fired from and to give them to her. In his affidavit, he states in great detail how he complies with her request, gathers the information, and gets it to her. He also said in the affidavit that uh, she planned to transfer grants and research and projects away from WPI because it was her research. She, he also said that, I quote, she was angry. She stated that she had enough of WPI. She stated that WPI would go down and that I should get out too. So after WPI learns of the stolen property, they file a civil lawsuit against Mikevitz to return the property, and then they report the materials as stolen to the police force of the University of Nevada. So Foss, the one who had taken the supplies and given them to her, according to him, she told them that she would be hiding out in California in a boat to avoid being served the lawsuit. And California is where they found her. And then she was arrested and her house was searched with a valid search warrant, by the way. She claims in the video they searched her house without a warrant. No warrant. Literally drug me out of the house. Our neighbors are looking at what's going on here. You know, they searched my house without a warrant. Well, they did have a warrant. And you can actually obtain a copy of the warrant online pretty easily. And if you want to think, oh, well, they could have just created a fake warrant after the fact to cover it up. Well, she also mentions in her 2014 book, called Plague, that they flashed a yellow piece of paper before searching her house. That's consistent with the warrant on file from the department. It's consistent with what she wrote in her book. The only thing it's inconsistent with is this video. So after she's arrested and her house is searched, she's charged with two felonies, possession of stolen property and unlawful taking of computer data, equipment, supplies, or other computer-related property. And that's despite saying she was held in jail with no, no charges. She was then let out on bail, despite also writing in her 2014 book that she was arrested on a no-bail warrant, and then shortly after she was released, she returned the stolen data to the Reno police. Now again, if you just desperately want to believe her and you want nothing more than for this conspiracy to be true, you might be saying, well, they could have just made all this up after the fact to refute her claims. But I hate to break it to you, I actually found a local news clip about her arrest from KRNV News 4 in Reno that directly contradicts her statements in this video saying that she was arrested under no charges, searched without a warrant, held without bail, and that evidence was planted in her home. 
World-renowned cancer researcher Judy Mikovits turned herself into po university police yesterday after complaints were filed that she stole computer items and notebooks from a lab at the University of Nevada, Reno. News 4's Dina Kupfer has the criminal complaint filed against Mikovits and got an exclusive interview with her lawyer. Dina, what'd you find out? Well, according to these court documents, the state has filed two complaints against Judy Mikovits. Count one, possession of stolen property. Count two, unlawfully taking computer data and other equipment, both listed as felonies. Judy Mikovits was the lead researcher at the Whittemore Peterson Institute before she was fired in August. The institute alleges she, quote, wrongfully removed lab notebooks and other proprietary information, end quote. The criminal complaint states that Mikovits directed her former research associate to take various items in order to prevent the true owner from again possessing the property. Mikovits's lawyer, Scott Freeman, told me his client is baffled at the criminal charges filed against her. She doesn't understand the process uh, because she would never think in her entire life she'd be subject to the process. From our perspective, uh, nobody uh, took those materials with any type of criminal intent. So uh, that's what we're investigating. And Mikovits waived her extradition hearing set for December 19th in Ventura County and turned herself into the university police Monday. Authorities told me they have recovered all of the items believed to be stolen. Now experts are looking through those items to determine if there was in fact any criminal intent. We're going to pursue uh, any criminal wrongdoing in this case. Um, that's what our main focus is, is to um, uh, complete an investigation, look at uh, the criminal aspect, and then submit the case to the Washington County District Attorney's Office. And after turning herself in Monday, Mikovits was taken into custody by the Washoe County Sheriff's Office, but she was released the same day. We will continue to follow this investigation and bring you the very latest. Bill? All righty, Dina, thank you very much. So then she claims she was placed under a five-year gag order. Well, the arrest took place in 2011, and she published a book where she talks about the incident in late 2014. If I understand gag orders and basic math, something just doesn't add up there. And by the way, that book that she released in 2014, that's not to be confused with the book that they bring up in the video, because she just released a new book. The one they bring up, they frame it in a way like your gag order is now up, so you've written this book so you can out your oppressors now that you're finally able to speak. But that's not true because she already wrote a book about it six years ago. It was called Plague. It came out in 2014, three years after the incident, and apparently two years before her gag order was up. And according to her, her gag order said she couldn't mention the case in any way and that she couldn't go on social media, but somehow they okayed her writing an entire book about the case. It's a little strange. And then now she's releasing a second book, the one they mentioned in the video called Plague of Corruption. So this book was just released on April 14th, just a few weeks before this video was released. Now, call me crazy, but I think this might help increase the sales of her new book. I mean, it's just a conspiracy, but it really makes you think, doesn't it? No, of course that's what this is about. It's an advertisement for her new book, and it's working, like, brilliantly. <laughs> it's a woman who got fired for her job. She stole some shit. She clearly lied about plenty of other stuff. Being arrested on no charges, held with no bail, searched with no warrant, being placed on a five-year gag order. I mean, we're literally three minutes into this video, and the first minute was just a drawn-out intro. So we're basically two minutes into this video, and her lying is already, like, on par with Trump minute by minute. It's ridiculous. So I'm just going to go over one more snippet of information. It's a little bit later in the video. Uh, she makes this claim that the whole game is to prevent the cure from getting out so that they can make money off the vaccine. That's what this whole thing is about. The game is to prevent the therapies till everyone is infected and push the vaccines, knowing that the flu vaccines increase the odds by 36% of getting COVID-19. Where does that data come from? A publication last year where the military who had been vaccinated with influenza were more susceptible to coronaviruses. Now, this is in reference to a study that took place during the 2017-2018 flu season, and it was published in October of 2019. So I looked into this study and put it up against her claims. So, yes, you will see text in there that looks like it confirms her hypothesis. But what she's essentially doing is cherry picking the study to formulate the narrative that she wants to see. So here's the complete picture. The article referenced several studies. 
that's the most important thing to note because in that context, it's important to make sure that you take into consideration all of the studies before you develop your conclusion. One study did find an increased risk of coronavirus and metanumovirus in vaccinated individuals compared to non-vaccinated. It says, examining non-influenza viruses specifically, the odds of both coronavirus and human metanumovirus in vaccinated individuals were significantly higher when compared to unvaccinated individuals, 1.36 and 1.51 respectively. So that's where that 36% increase number comes from. But if you continue to read the article, you'll find further studies that found the opposite was true. There was a decreased risk of other respiratory pathogens, which includes coronavirus. Another study found that there was no association whatsoever between the influenza vaccine and non-influenza respiratory viruses. So if you continue reading, they come to the conclusion of the study. The overall results of the study showed little to no evidence supporting the association of virus interference and influenza vaccination. Individual respiratory virus results were mixed and some rebutted virus interference. Uh, further research is necessary to help character virus interference. So is she wrong? Technically, no, because there was one set of results that showed a 36% increase, but that's not how the science was presented here. I mean, she misrepresented the very study that she referenced because it was that study, the one that showed a 36% increase that came to the conclusion that overall, little to no evidence supported the association of virus interference and influenza vaccination because they took into account all of the data available, not just one set of data that tells them what they wanted to be true. And then she's just throwing this out there like, yeah, you know, the vaccine, it actually increases your chances of getting coronavirus 36%. But it's just not true. One of several studies came to that result, but several others showed the opposite. It's a total misrepresentation of data. And that's why it's ridiculous that she just talks and then these people are lapping up her words like thirsty dogs, desperate for another reason to go buy more ammo at Walmart. It's ridiculous. So just don't believe something just because you want it to be true. Listen to John Keynes. When the facts change, you might need to change your conclusions. And this video is like a cliche textbook conspiracy YouTube video. And people should know better than to just take it at face value. So, all right, that's all I've got on Plandemic. I'm going to be releasing another video soon on the doctors that are speaking out as well. Not about the Plandemic video, but just about how they think this whole thing is overhyped and a hoax, how they're being pressured to inflate the numbers. I'll be releasing a video about the lockdown protests and the next CARES Act bill and the $2,000 UBI the Democrats are trying to pass. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see those, and I'll see you guys later. Political bullshit.